It's an honor and a pleasure to host the amazing Thank you. gamer and all around player, Reut Aye, which is named Aka Queen Nikki on Twitch and also on YouTube and everywhere. And it's really a pleasure. And I hope you'll enjoy today on our first Gameful Heroes uh, Facebook Live. And also, this uh, live will go on to the podcast, which is called Gameful Heroes, uh, as well. So, um, we are on. Great, great, great. That's what I'm posting right now, so everybody can join us as well. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So, uh, yeah. Likewise, likewise. I think that your story is very unique, and um, I think it's... Uh, if you want to really influence and also to, how do you say, break meat, you know, bad meat about gamers and gaming, because uh, breaking meat is uh, some, something that I really like. There's a lot of negativity against gaming and against gamer. And your story just inspiring me. I just saw your uh, lecture at Amdox Z event. It was just amazing. And I will, I'm happy that you uh, can share with, with me and with our viewers uh, your thought about about gaming. So, how how did you became? What is the story? How did you became a Twitch and YouTube streamer? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I was a gamer. Uh, first and foremost, uh, hmm. uh, since I was like little, I played in video games before there was even Windows. When there was DOS, I know how to type in English before I know how to type in Hebrew, just because I wanted to play games. So uh, it started from there. And then if you remember, there was uh, the Sega with the tapes and everything, the yeah. console. Uh, so I was PC and console and I had a Mega Drive and uh, PlayStation 1 and all of that. And I was always like uh, very attracted to everything gaming related. It's just the experience. It's just detaching and being somewhere else uh, like for a little bit, uh, just enjoying a different story. Um, in time. What was your right? first game that you play, that you can recall? The first game ever, it was Indiana Jones RGB in DOS. Oh! It was oh. really, really old. It had only like three colors and that's it, basically. Yeah, mine was uh, Doom and Unreal. I was like hooked into Unreal. Unreal which current, yeah. Also by Epic Games, but now is a new version, but the old version was, I was imagining myself, you know, playing within the game, and then there was, of course, uh, other games as well. But my first game was Pong. Uh, I oh. was really you know, playing Pong on the TV. It was like, uh, you know, handle that you can, the Pong with the ball, it was amazing. Oh, I got you now, I remember which one was it. Yeah, it's a really yeah, Pong on 2017, we are, uh, well, myself, I'm, how do you say, Maleta uh, Gilme Mutsa, we are up, Say, yeah, no, there is like... no age for gaming. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> I'm to disappoint you. There is no age for gaming. You see gamers on Twitch. Some of them are 60, 70. Everybody is playing. Just do whatever makes you happy. Every minute, just another gamer joining the, the community of gamers. So this is also very interesting. And we'll be happy if you can share with us the way that from love of games, uh, how did you become uh, the amazing streamer that you are on Twitch TV? First of all, thank you. Um, it was like this. I was at a point in my life like two and a half years ago um, that I had to decide if I'm going, I used to live in Canada, but and I came back to Israel and I had to decide if I'm gonna go back to high tech cause I worked in IT. I have an IT background mm -hmm. or I'm gonna go and follow my heart and do something I actually love and makes me happy. And that actually works with my, and I'm doing this because for me it's, it's not this, but it's like my disability. It's hard for me to say still like uh, fully that word. Um, so I can have my own time. I can game whenever I want. I can stream whenever mm -hmm. I want. Of course, you got to get to that point that you can sort of make a living of it as much as you can. Um, but for me, it, it worked when it came, I would say it to my brain. It worked for my brain to be a streamer, to be a gamer. I'm doing something I love in the safety of my house. If something happens, I can always change the schedule because I'm in charge of my yeah. own business. And um, I can even like be with people even though I'm alone in my house. So so it's very, story, on, although people think it's like uh, there's a stigma and, you know, myth about 
gamers which are lonely, they are actually between six and 18 years old, down in the basement doing their gaming stuff and isolated from the world. Uh, it's not not the thing at all. We can break this myth right now, right? As we it's speak. Not, it's not breaking the myth because that thing does exist. There is pros and cons to everything and in gaming as well. Uh, like everything, if you take something to the extreme and it gets in the way in like your everyday normal function and takes away from you making a living, eating, taking a shower, mm -hmm. like hurts you, it's an addiction like everything else. Uh, but yeah. to say gaming is all bad, no, that's not true. There's a lot of things that are positive to gaming. Um, like we started to talk about, like my story, gaming helped yeah. me getting out of bed and communicate with people and be with people, mm -hmm. even though it's hard for me to leave the house. And then mm -hmm. streaming came along and made me, gave me the option to provide mm -hmm. for myself. Because every job I would apply to and would get accepted, I would yeah. be really, really good at. But unfortunately, my limitations, um, I couldn't keep those jobs because I, my brain has its own schedule. Yeah. Um, so when my friends, uh, especially my best friend, Nati and uh, Victor and Itai pushed me to and talked mm -hmm. to me about streaming and actually helped me and getting me gear so I can start streaming, um, yeah. that's what made the whole difference and a whole new world open to me. And I can tell you that for years, I didn't wake up with a smile in the morning, seriously. Wow. Ever mm -hmm. since I'm a streamer, I'm waking up with a smile way more. I still have like, you know, yom asa, yom basa, one bad day, one good day, but um, no complaints. Uh, seriously. Yeah, no today complaints. actually I'm seeing uh, that you're wearing a special shirt. What's going, What's that all about? I, I'm thinking, apropos, uh, this is, having fun. Uh, this so what's that all about? Uh, this is the announcement I wanted uh, to talk about. Uh, from today, officially, wow. MSI is my sponsor, my hardware sponsor. Oh and my God! Bless everybody super, on the on the, the show. This I'm is super amazing. super excited, and uh, wow. I have, I have to tell you, besides getting my first sponsor from this amazing amazing company, I just want to say the way they work so fast. And when I when they approached me and we started talking, the first thing I told them, I want stuff for a charity stream I'm working on. We're going to talk about it later. Uh, mm. And they said, no problem, just tell us what you need and we'll be happy to help. If you need anything else, we'll be happy to help. And it's an amazing to see a company this size, like from the get-go, helping me like that. And not only me, for the people I want to help. And of course, they yeah. got some cool stuff uh, for my viewers as well. Um, and a lot of cool I things that uh, like uh, me and MSI are going to do together for the community and my mm. viewers' uh, reviews as well. And I'm telling you in advance, for good. And for the bad, even though I'm getting yeah. something to review, I want to be clear that you know me. I will tell you if I think it's good, but if I think it's bad, I'm going to say it's mm -hmm. bad. So yeah. this is the announcement. Yeah. I'm so glad to announce it. I'm super excited. Wow, I'm so I thrilled to be the, the first one that, uh, you know, yeah, we, we are... I just opened the shirt before the <laughs> podcast. Breaking yeah. news, guys. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I'm Very really cool. excited. Thank you. So yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to cooperate with them and uh, doing some cool stuff together. So yes. Actually, one of the, the things that we'll uh, talk about it uh, later on, but there's a thing that uh, like it's like an empathic machine because even if you you know shooting and doing a first-person shooter or third-person shooter games like Halo, Call of Duty, whatever we play, GTA, whatever. It's still on top of the meat that uh, it, it uh, brings uh, your violence to the real life. It's the other way around. What we learned from the study is that you become more empathic. And I see a lot of gamers like you, actually in the United States and England, that raised over $2 million last year for hospital, for, for kids. So this is amazing that people are doing, you know, contributing their time, their effort to help others. And it's, it's vice versa. It's a completely different from what people think about gamers and gaming. Uh, listen, when it comes to certain games like FPS and violent games, for me, it's a place that I can vent. I can take my anger out. I can tell you some mm -hmm. days I wake up so angry about, I don't know, the, the spirits. I don't know even who I am. <laughs> I go to, into a game and I take my rage out. And it's, it's real rage. And I take it out in a virtual place that no one gets hurt, everybody can respond, and we're having fun. 
Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, there's pros and cons to gaming as well. Some people would take uh, the reality of a game and reflect it to the real reality and will try to imitate it. Uh, mm. Usually it's kids that are more influenced and stuff like that. And here it's where I say that the parents have to uh, draw the line and know what content uh, their kids are yeah. installing, what they're playing, how long are they on the computer. Uh, because if you allow them to experience that type of violence from young age and be affected by it, it's going to have, probably it's going to have consequences after. I can tell yeah. you in my bat mitzvah, I missed my bat mitzvah party because I played Duke Nukem. I waited for my aunt at the entrance and she got me the disc. I went up and play and I wasn't there. I don't even have one picture yeah. for my bat mitzvah. It wasn't that smart uh, back in the day, uh, but today uh, the games are, because the graphic is more real and it actually mm. feels like vivid. It's almost vivid sometimes. Um, I think it's, it's very vivid. It's like uh, the yeah. fidelity is amazing. The fidelity of the game is like, you know, just quoted uh, today, I'm serving the Israeli Digital Game Research Association uh, chapter. There's an association of uh, game researcher. Actually, the conference is going to be in Tokyo in 2019, oh. this year in August. And I, I'm just putting, you know, quotes if, every day. And today, the quote from the researchers that published yesterday was that gamers are inhibited if they see stimulus in their real life, they are more likely to enjoy stimuli in the virtual world, in the, in the gaming, more than real life. So this is very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I believe some experiences uh, you can only experience, you know, on the PC in a game, like walking on the moon or yeah. something like that. Uh, to be honest, as much as I'm a gamer and I do not leave the house a lot, I still enjoy outdoor activities and just getting some fresh air and experiencing life. There has to yeah. be a limit to everything. Even if I, if I exceed, sure. like, for sure. mm -hmm. I can tell you the maximum time I've played straight was 52 hours. If you don't think it didn't mess up with my brain, you're wrong. It <laughs> messed up with my brain, it messed up with my body, with my sleep, yeah. with everything. Yeah. So everything has to be in the right um, dosage. Um, besides that, uh, like I said, content. Make sure your kids are playing the right content for their age and what is appropriate. And not if everybody goes, uh, just go with the herd. Don't do that because sometimes the herd is not making the right choice. Um, yeah. for, I, can, I can give Fortnite, for example, that everybody's talking about it. Um, that, that Fortnite, like, visually looks uh, very um, cartoonish and very fun, but at the basis of it, it's a violent game. And you can see right. the reactions of kid while, kids while they play it. So that game, as much as it looks cartoonish and kids-friendly, I wouldn't recommend, like, my nephews and nieces to play it, to be honest. It has to have, like, a more kids-friendly background. Yeah, cool. So this is a, actually, of course, we have to be careful when we talk about the um, small kids and the, how they affect, uh, affect on the mind. But as grown up, I think that ga ga the gaming industry and gaming itself is a big power of enhancing people with special, um, how do you say, special needs. And I think that this is something that uh, um, hopefully we can talk about it. What do you think about um, uh, this is the question in our agenda. How can you make, uh, no, not that one, sorry, sorry, that one. Okay. Uh, using gaming and streaming uh, to benefit people with uh, special needs or disabilities, from your experience, what, what do you, is your take on that? Okay, um, it's a few things because there is different type of disabilities. So I will start with my own example myself. Um, I'm not gonna get emotional this time, guys, I'm just saying. I'm going to do my okay, best not to. Okay. You can, this. everything is okay. <laughs> I, I know that I can, I don't want to. I did my makeup I'm in a good mood. I just want, you know. Um, yeah. Like I said, unfortunately, I suffer from 150% disability. I suffer from uh, uh, severe PTSD, anxiety, sometimes uh, depression, and seizures, ticks uh, on the right side of my body that can just drain me out for hours mm -hmm. and sometimes if, even for a day or two. Uh, wow. When I was when you suffer from something like that, a lot of times you don't want, I'm sorry, I'm not looking to the camera. Uh, you don't even want to see um, daylight or it's hard to even, it was hard to go outside. I, like I said, in the lecture, I had months, I didn't see daylight. I couldn't open a window. I couldn't yeah. get out of the door and it was really hard. So when I was in bed and on the sofa, most of the time, um, yeah. I wanted to start to move myself and I always loved gaming. So I would play by myself on the computer and then 
one day I wasn't even aware of uh, clans and people that are playing. And I knew that there was online gaming, there was um, chat in game, and that's it. And one day I got a message on Steam from a group, and they have this thing called TeamSpeak. It was um, new then, and then I yeah. found out I could play with people. And suddenly mm -hmm. in the morning, um, slowly uh, I got excited to wake up and um, or if I can't sleep, to just log on to that team speak and uh, talk to people mm -hmm. and communicate with them and to play with them. And if I had a, a bad night, they would, you know, try to make me happy or to make me laugh. And yeah. I start to communicate more and more and I start to get out of bed more and more. And um, the gaming like took me out of the reality and the flashbacks I was experiencing. And as mm -hmm. much as it's weird that I played Call of Duty and my PTSD is like war based. Um, yeah. That's a weird connection for me, uh, but somehow it works. And as much as I played that game, I felt like I'm letting my anger and my frustrations out and um, and people are around me, but I'm still at home. I'm not, I don't need to leave the house. Yeah. So gaming took me out of bed in due time, years after streaming showed me I can take my skill, whatever, how you want to call it, and make a living off of Gamer it. Gamer skill? Then, yeah. Uh, how do you want to call it? It can be you, you don't have to be a good gamer to be a good streamer. You can be entertained. Right. So whatever it is. Um, it's your personality. I think it's it's a combination of your personality and the way that you connect with the camera. So it's like every other, you know, broadcaster. But this especially because you bring, how do you say, uh, reflecting your, your own personality, your own value and also your own uh, beauty, w whatever you can you can show the world, and if people connect to you, you just hook to it. I'm I'm going to tell you something. This the is the gaming uh, experience and the uh, skills that you have to to, to be. Usually on stream, usually on stream, I don't talk about these things because yeah. I do get emotional because it, mm -hmm. it is hard to come and say, hey, I have this and this and this. And as much as I live with it for years, it's not something that I would ever say, okay, I'm cool with it because I'm not. And I wish I didn't have it and wouldn't have this agenda yeah. and everything. I would give it yeah. away in a heartbeat. Just take it. I don't I don't need special attention. And um, this is like the third time I'm talking about it in in public. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, sort of, sort, sorry, sort of the, the four-ish because the first time I said it on stream, it was like a year and a half after I was streaming and I had only like a bunch of the people like that were really close to me on stream. And I just yeah. told them that just to get it off my chest. And um, and the the time after that uh, was in the Z talk that you said, the previous was a podcast and this is now. So every time I'm saying it, it, it just brings it up. So on my stream, I'm trying to keep it positive and everything, but of course, I have people coming into my stream, uh, a lot of even uh, U.S. military um, soldiers yeah. uh, that are coming in and saying, hey, I read your bio, I read about you, and um, thank you for your service, and I'm suffering from this, this, and this. And you yeah. pause everything sort of in the game, and you give them the attention they need, because sometimes you know that they just need the attention. Maybe he's yeah. in his house right now feeling alone. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, yeah, so you know, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm so connected to you. You're so moving. You're so inspiring me. I'm just, you know, I'm also getting, you know, emotional here. We didn't Don't plan it. Don't ruin my makeup. Don't ruin my makeup. Yeah, yeah, we didn't plan it in advance. But as we said before, before the broadcast, we just mentioned uh, my good friend, and I'm sure we're gonna streaming. Uh, you know, I'm gonna send him the link of your uh, of your uh, conversation. Uh, his name is uh, Professor Skip Rizzo. Is uh, the head of uh, the UEC uh, special new media in uh, California. He's a specialist in uh, PTSD, um, virtual reality, and also gaming technology. He's one of the best known, you know, professor. And he's a very cool guy, and uh, trying to do, uh, you know, on, in the field with veterans, with Americans uh, that were, were in Afghanistan to, to do treatment for PTSD. Uh, what we call the uh, just say light exposure until you get into the the, the stuff itself with uh, very sophisticated tools and we know that there's a lot of uh, uh let's say good uh, percentage of of i don't say healing but you know treating treating this this kind of problem and 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 as a, also a lecturer at the idc uh, in Italy, I, I can tell you that when we are talking about new technologies uh and also gaming technology for for people Usually it's one-on-one, -on -one, 
And the streaming that you do, like if it's broadcasting like several thousand, you are influencing more people than one, you know, one psychologist per one. Once, once is more than enough. It's better than on like influencing, uh, you know, no one. Um, yeah. But if, and by the way, you told me about it even before you knew I suffer from PTSD. And I told yeah. you if they need a guinea pig, I'm here. If they can take it away, um, yeah. my best. My best friend is watching right now. Every time that it happens to me, yeah. I text him, please take it out of my brain. So if someone can, God okay. bless. So I, I'll be more than willing, of course, to uh, to see what me and him can do or even just communicate with him to see maybe he has even something yeah. for me. Um, but that's for PTSD. You can take gaming for so many different disabilities, like social anxiety for kids that suffer yeah. from bullying. Behind the screen and no one sees you, can't judge you, you pick the channel you want to be in, you you pick the chat you're involved in. Uh, so you can create your own, um, you know, um, house of friends and log into yeah. a safe place and know, and it's people will support you. Exactly. 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 And people will support you and protect you on chat. Of course, it depends what streamer and chat it is. Uh, so a lot of people with social anxiety that suffer from bullying, even uh, people that uh, suffer from a flat cache of a HDH, I'm always confused with uh, a. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot how to say it in English. Uh, that suffer from um, HDHD. Oh, I'm not Okay. Yeah. I, I know what I you mean. It's like a, a short span of attention, a lot of uh, yes. motion control. Yeah. HDMD. Yes. So they started to do even studies about that, that uh, some gaming can help kids that uh, has a, have a problem with it. So you can take it there. For me, the main goal when it comes to disabilities is, like you said, that people talk about that gaming keeps people in the house, locked in the basement, and uh, mm -hmm. that's all they do. I'm trying to help the people that are trying to leave the house to mm -hmm. leave the house without actually leaving it if they can't. So yeah. for me, when I think about helping someone is unfortunately to take someone that is paralyzed in a bed. And last week I was in a place called uh, V-Reality and I played it with re uh, virtual reality glasses. And in one game that is called um, uh, Skyfront, I actually felt I'm levitating. I felt I'm flying. Yeah. Now, wow. uh, just the thought of putting that uh, virtual reality glasses on someone else that is disabled and giving them the, sen the sensation he can fly, it's amazing. And if he can't get yeah. out of his bed, he wants to see Vegas, he can see Vegas, he can see Rome, he can see Paris, everything from a go goggles. Or if he wants to communicate with friends from his bed, like I really try yeah. to help the people that can't physically move to help them move through gaming and provide from themselves. Uh, yeah, like you said, there's, mm -hmm. sorry? Yeah, actually it's very interesting. Uh, sorry for, for cutting you off. Um, you know, there, there's another world, like we have um, um, Fortnite, which is also have a creative mode now for kids. And we, they, we have another amazing game called Minecraft. And within Minecraft, there is a community of, of special islands, which is specialized for people with, with autism. So people or kids with autism, more specifically for teens with autism. So when we're talking about Problem, it's usually when you think about someone that suffers for something, you're focusing on him, but we can't focus on only on the person because he has family, he has brothers, he has sisters. It's all, it's you know, it, it's it's complex stuff. And this uh, place, when you can get the parents together with the kids, it's a Minecraft for for autism. It's, it's amazing, and it's it's helping a lot of people to communicate and to, to do a lot of good. That's very interesting. I didn't know about it. And that's beautiful because uh, if it's like a closed community for autistic kids, it's very important because if someone, you know, comes in and try to troll them or pick on them, mm -hmm. it actually can cause the other way around. So when they have their closed yeah. community, it's great and they support each other. So that's amazing. And yeah, you can't focus on the person itself only. You can focus on the content you're creating, like you and I talked, and I said before, yeah. uh, creating physiotherapy-based games for yeah. kids. Just try to create the content, the game-based, but for therapy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be amazing. But this is the beginning. Something that you're talking about, something like that. It's the beginning when you're starting to create dedicated servers for disabled people for their disability. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's new for me. That's actually beautiful. 
Yeah, great. So first of all, uh, on the screen, you can see uh, Queen Nikki uh, on Twitch, and she's also on YouTube, so you can check, check her out and just follow whatever broadcasting uh, there you are doing. This, this is crazy, and uh, this is great. And I just want to ask you, you know, if you just take a platform and just um, do another stuff, how can you make a living of, of Twitch streaming? This is something that everybody is asking, and can you just, um, you know, share a light on that? Little I bit? can explain uh, the ways to make money on stream. Um, okay. There's um, five or more ways. First of all, um, of course, it's donations. Your viewers, when they want to support you, they want to help you get better gear. They want you to keep you, like, keep on streaming. We want you to be here. And for you to be there, you need to make a living. If not, you need to go and do something else. So yeah. uh, some of your viewers uh, donate to you. Some of them subscribe to your channel uh, with a monthly pay. Even though they don't have to, they can watch you for free. Uh, but they can choose tier one, which is $5, tier two, which is $15, and tier three, which is $25. And the streamer splits it 50-50 with Twitch. Depends if he's a partner and affiliate and, and so. Yeah. Um, that's the second way. Third way to make money on Twitch is Beats. Beats, it's like uh, the virtual coin uh, by Amazon. And you can get it by watching advertisements on Twitch. I think uh, it used to be like making purchases on Amazon as well. You can get some beats. Um, don't hold me up on that. And uh, every beat equals one cent. So when you're watching uh, commercials while the streamer is uh, streaming, you accumulate those beats and then you can donate them to your uh, favorite streamer. Mm -hmm. um, another way to make money, of course, is uh, sponsors and being invited to events and uh, interviews and stuff like that, uh, which comes along uh, if the streams, of course, go uh, go well. And uh, there's another way that if you are a pro player slash streamer, you can make money mm -hmm. uh, from competitions as well. But that is less streaming. Basically, it's the main three things, um, donation, mm -hmm. subscription, and beats. So it's like... Um... It's like I think that it's when we are talking about streaming, it's like a re, it's a job. It's like you're, you're it's going to. Job. It's like you invest. How do you say you you taking into it a lot of uh, a lot of uh, effort to make the content right to prepare yourself. It's not just okay. Let's do live now and uh, everything. Yeah. The, the the money will start pouring, right? First first and foremost, I have to say and give credit to my moderators and my stream, Savi. Tanya, Nati, um, Gustav, Devastator, uh, Teaser, Omi. Guys, I wouldn't even make it without you. Like, I have moderators that help me above and beyond to, because for me to get ready for a stream as a woman with a camera and everything, it's lighting, makeup, hair, changing titles, changing this. I have moderators that takes away during this stream and even before this stream, like 40% 40 away, 40 away from my pressure and the stuff mm -hmm. that I have to do. Because if I didn't change the game, Tavi will change the game. And if the title is wrong, Tanya will text uh -huh. me, hey. Daddy. So I have moderators that really watch me and uh, actually um, hold my channel together. And if they see something wrong, they fix it. They have access to do so. So mm -hmm. some people think that you light on the computer, you go live and that's it. Yeah. No, you have to set up music, log into the bots, change title. Um, of course, make sure you have like new games to play. Make sure that you have people to play with. Um, it's a lot of get posting in social media. It's a, listen, you're the director. Uh, you're the um, um, this uh, the script. I don't know the guy who writes the script. You're the talent. You're the product. Yeah. Yeah. You're everything. And besides getting ready for the stream, that for me it can take up to two hours when it comes to doing everything. You're still going to stream like minimum of uh, four or five hours. So it's a full-time job. And of course, after yeah, you have a lot of people to reply on social media that texted you back and you want to give them the attention back. So it's, yeah, it's and, a lot and of... I'm so, and I'm so, yeah, and I'm so happy for you that you got MSI uh, sponsorship. This is just fantastic. And I hope it will give you more, yeah, more uh, thumbs up for MSI for, for, for bringing it to you. And uh, hopefully you will have uh, more... Uh, resources and, and also stuff mm -hmm. to, to do, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty, I'm super excited about MSI and uh, I told you the, the, the biggest thing I'm excited about that they're gonna uh, give a lot of stuff for the charity stream, which is gonna be amazing. They're gonna make these kids really, really, really happy. And yes, they're gonna make my viewers really happy. I can tell you today, I got like boxes 
of really cool stuff that I'm going to do, like giveaways for my viewers or I yeah. give to the people that I'm working with in the industry. I would love even to send you a goodie bag if it's okay with you. I would send you a really nice uh, MSI goodie bag. Uh, I would love to do that. Cool. And cool. Uh, you can show it off to whoever you want. And yeah. uh, I'm pretty excited because uh, this company saw the potential in me. And they came and they say, we believe in you. Let us support you and in, in your cause. And they did things wow. so fast. Really they just started really talking amazing. and I already got everything. I'm speechless. I'm just honored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. So John and Victor uh, from MSI, if you're watching, you're the best. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, not only yeah, for me, for the kids, the soldiers, my viewers. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank so you guys. I see also people are just, uh, we are not um, co commenting on the, on the guys on the live stream, but thank you for everyone that watching and reacting uh, to us now on, on live. Uh, okay, my I think viewers are best thing to, yeah. close, to close down the broadcast, uh, to, you know, the, or, you know, I mean, we can talk. We can talk about it like like days. I think uh, I, I think we can this play. This won't be the last time and you and I are talking, so it's all good. Yeah, we can talk about it later. But I think that what interested me uh, when we talked uh, before, uh, you know, uh, this broadcast was uh, your coming up a, a good deeds campaign, uh, and we'd love to if you can, you know, highlight about that. Yes, because yes, yes. Coming up, um, my dream was like from ever I started streaming that I would get to the point that I can have some influence and do some giving back to the community because um, back in the day, I used to volunteer, like I told you, for the Red Cross. And that was yeah. like the biggest satisfaction ever. I can't explain how satisfying it is for me to help someone else. Seriously, it makes me, it's the best thing ever. Um, so I waited to the point that I can have some influence so I can get some back behind me uh, to help mm -hmm. others. So... Um, I pitched that idea to uh, the Israeli sport channel, Sport 5, uh, to Yoav and Matan. And uh, yeah. I pitched it to uh, Eviatar from Ynet. And uh, when I was in the last podcast, Radio Kola Shvela said they're going to support it as well. Uh, what we're trying to do is create for Purim, which is next month, a Litzor Mishloch Manot to create a small gaming oh, for uh, Purim. goodie bag for, for Purim. Purim. Yeah. Yes, so I'm trying to create a gaming goodie bag for Purim, which is and uh, which is like I think awesome, and uh, get stuff from different companies. Uh, MSI is on board. I'm still waiting uh, for uh, answers from uh, different uh, companies. I someone well. invite to you. I'm just uh, when we close the the show, I will have some some interesting news for you as well. I will. I have some yeah, been... for you. There's a company. Okay. Yeah, new company. Cool. Okay. So. I'm waiting to hear from uh, other gaming companies to see if they're willing, uh, not even as my sponsor, just willing to give some stuff to make it, make some kids happy. Of course, it's going to be published everywhere. Um, so we're the talking about idea, kids at uh, which, which, which center, which? Uh, I want to do it uh, for Schneider Hospital, um, uh, for the oncological department of um, Schneider oh. Hospital, which is the kids oh, hospital. Uh, yeah, uh, and I really want to make those kids happy. So I got a lot of like cool gaming stuff for kids, and I'm gonna do a charity stream as well before that, oh, so I can yeah. raise some money to get balloons and candy and wrappers, so I can get everything done by myself. Um, there is only one or two charity organizations that I believe in fully, so I always rather to take the money, show receipts, and show that everything was bought. It's really important for me for people to know that their money is going straight to the kids. 100% yeah. of that charity stream. Uh, I'm going to buy candy, balloons, uh, wrappers, everything I need to make Count those goodie bags. I mean, Count me, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, of course, I would let you know. And it's not only for uh, Schneider. It's not only for kids at Schneider. I really want to get some stuff for soldiers at Levenstein. Uh, to make them happy, or their even their families, uh, their brothers, uh, giving even something to the families. Um, so Levenstein is like, uh, let's say that people that are not, not familiar with that, uh, Levenstein Rehabilitation Hospital is one of the biggest uh, Klalit uh, group uh, hospital, uh, which uh, encompasses all really the uh, people that suffer from injuries, uh, also soldiers, and also from, from yeah. any other trauma. So it's uh, the yes. biggest, biggest uh, hospital in Israel. Yeah, so it, it goes for people that are physically uh, from the point of like, I, I, I can't even say it, but I don't know how to say it in English, so forgive me. A little bit okay. handicapped, even though it's the wrong way to say it, but you know what I mean, uh, from yeah. uh, from the neck down. And um, yeah. 
from the least to the worst. We are power play. Power play. This is what we call it in English. Power play. We are. Yeah. So uh, we're trying to help everybody. For me, my soft spot is kids and uh, veterans or, or people that got injured in uh, terrorist attacks or uh, car accidents. Uh, and in future charity streams, uh, we'll be donating to um, charity streams all around the world because my viewers are from uh, Europe, from the States, from North America. Yeah. I want them to be able to donate to where they live with all the respect. So we're yeah. going to create a, a list of verified uh, organizations or we're going to find that that viewer we can count on and he will go and get the stuff and we'll have like messengers around the world that can be nice. Uh, but yeah. this is wouldn't be the last charity stream I'm doing. And hopefully everybody will pitch in and we'll be happy to help for publicity or no publicity. Just, you know, just think yeah. about it that you make someone happy. Um, so if anyone is watching this and would like to pitch in, I'm here. Yeah, usually, you know, exactly. I'm uh, with you all the way because, you know, when you suffer, because I was, um, I've endured several, uh, you know, uh, mishap and uh, had accident and stuff. Uh, so I know what it's mean that, when you think, when you know that people are thinking about you and helping you, it's like, like a booster to, to the mind, to the soul. And this is what you do. And you're really inspiring. I think that uh, what you do is really inspiring. And just uh, uh, this is this is amazing. This is really you're really amazing, and inspiring. Me and, um, and I, I'm sorry for cutting you off. To say something about inspiring, I saw on an article on TV. Um, this girl and she she has a type of disability and she's actually a doctor. She said, "I don't want to be an inspiration because I didn't pick my, I didn't pick my situation. Like I told you before, you can just take it. I'm not yeah. an inspiration. I just live with my condition and I'm trying to help other others. Because if it was up to me, take it away. I don't want to inspire everyone. So I want to inspire people in other things. Because um, this is for me is my, is my default. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, of course." Completely. Yeah. Okay, guys. I uh, first, Raoult, uh, I, I wish really all the best to you and all the success in uh, in this field of uh, Twitch streaming and stuff, influencing in real life and also in the virtual life. I was very honored to, to host you in my our first uh, actually Gameful Heroes live podcast. It's live podcast in English, so it's fine. Uh, please, guys, follow Twitch TV Queen Nikki. Uh, just um, go there, and uh, I think we can uh, close it with uh, really big. And of course, one sec, and of course, uh, follow Hanan. You have uh, the links in my uh, uh yeah. Facebook, you have the links cool. in my uh, Instagram and my Twitter. So, check him out, he's gonna do more podcasts. Me and him, it's not our last talk. I'm telling you from my side, it's not our last talk. We're gonna do Fantastic. some good stuff, and uh, thank okay, you for guys. having me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Game on, and uh. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye, -bye everybody. We're closing the, the broadcast and have a nice evening and farewell. Till next time. Game on. Game on. Bye bye. Bye bye.